So we all know the backstory, and um, it was about maybe three or four years ago that I was actually encouraging my mom to do a little dating. Uh, my sisters don't really know this, but I was thinking like, hey, she is used to being in a relationship and having a, a team, a teammate, a team member to do life with, and so I had been kind of thinking about, you know, what's what's the future look like for my mom and. She was never interested in dating, ever, and uh, she continued to, to wear her ring, actually, many, many years after our father passed away. And um, so I remember when somebody told me uh, that she had met Dave. I think it was Ashley told me for the first time that she had met somebody. And I was overjoyed about uh, the situation. And my mom told me all about Dave and all the similarities with the, the business and um, the family dynamics, uh, both have like very special families. I think it's three boys uh, on your side, Dave, and then, and then we have four on our side. So the similarities were like pretty cool. And uh, the interesting thing that I found about Dave was um, I would uh, talk to somebody else in the community about my mom dating this guy, Dave, uh, my biological father, in fact, Tom. And, and he happened to kind of inadvertently know Dave. Oh, yeah, everybody knows Dave. Dave's, <laughs> Dave's like a really great guy, has a really good reputation, actually. I've never met him, but I think he's a great dude. And then uh, it turns out their architect, Chris Fimbo, knows Dave. And Dave, or actually, Chris Fimbo said, uh, what did he say? Oh, he said, um, Dave Durr is the guy that everybody wants to be. <laughs> That's what was said. Um, my Aunt Karen actually knows someone inadvertently that knows Dave, and the story was similar. And I think Susan, don't, do you maybe know somebody inadvertently that knows Dave? So I kept hearing, like, Dave's reputa reputation really precedes him, right? And then I finally met Dave, and I'm like, okay, cool. So it made it really easy for me to trust Dave with Glennis's heart by hearing this stuff. And uh, last night, we were at Dave's, and uh, we played this game. We played a few games. I'm terrible at games. I hate games. But we played a game, a conversation starting game. And the question was asked of me, what did your mom teach you? Or what was, what was the question? What was? They asked me three times. What was the most important thing you learned from your mom? And uh, the first, I can't stop thinking, the first thing she taught me was how to clean the bathroom. <laughs> that's, that's what she, she did, and I, I felt like that was an inappropriate answer. And, uh, and then she, next she taught me how to vacuum, actually, and then fold socks. She taught me a lot about that. So she taught me these things. And, um, but I really felt like all that was in, 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 like not right thing to say, so I passed. And I was thinking about this this morning about like teaching people, right? There's a few ways. Uh, teaching's definitely a gift. It's a spiritual gifting that we have, the ability to teach people, right? So we can tell people, we can show people, or we can do it as an example. Those are the way, we, oh, or we can read about things. So I was thinking about these things. I was thinking about um, a passage in the Bible that's very familiar to everybody that we've all probably read the Proverbs 31 woman passage, right? And the Proverbs 31 woman, she's up early. Her husband trusts her. I mean, she's on point. And my mom showed me what that woman looks like. She taught me that through showing me this. But what a lot of people miss in the Proverbs 31 passage is the Proverbs 31 man. And it says that he is well known at the gates and that he sits with the elders. And that's Dave. Yeah. That's Dave. So um, I just think like this pair right here is really special and really unique. And I'll pass off before I start to cry. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, so can we get a salute here? Yeah. Cheers to Glennis and Dave. Wow. That was great. I'm proud of you, bud. <laughs> so I am Jessica. I'm the oldest daughter. 
and I have my notes so I stay on track here. Um, what Justin had to say about our mom in dating was completely different than how I felt. Um, <laughs> so, of course, growing up, like, a daddy-daughter bond is so special, and he, sorry, we talked last night about how our parents are our heroes, so how could anybody compare to my hero, and that's how I always thought about it, and I could never even think of my mom dating anyone. It would make me like physically ill. All the, even like up till seven years, like seven years after it happened. So um, that was always my hang up. Is like, how could somebody ever replace or fill that that spot that's missing? And um, when she told me though that she had met someone. I, I was always waiting for like the day, you know, that it would happen. But she literally dated no one for eight years, not even one interest. So I was like, it's bound to happen. Like she's beautiful, like Proverbs 31 woman, like so it's gonna happen. And when it did, I was like really peace, like at peace with it. And um, I didn't feel um, anxious at all. I just it felt right. So that's how I knew, like, okay, my heart, I'm like, we're ready for, for this. And um, like how I talked about the replacing thing, I think I had it mixed up. Like, just because someone new enters doesn't mean that they have to replace or fill that empty spot. And actually, Susan taught me that when I was pregnant with my son. I told her, how could I ever love someone? as much as I love my daughter, like it's literally impossible. I don't know how th this is gonna work, you know? And she said, Jessica, what's so amazing about this is you don't have to take any space. What happens is your heart grows a whole new wing for that new child or that new person in your life. And that's all I could think about with my mom and Dave is that no one's filling a spot or replacing anyone. It's just, it's a whole new part that we all are growing and going to grow and can have in our hearts. So that's what I had to say. <laughs> yes, so cheers, cheers to new beginnings. Yeah. I can't wait to see what's in store for our huge families coming together. Um, yeah, it's still on. Good. Hi, uh, my name's Mike Agostini. I'm the, I'm the guy. Yeah. So I am Cupid. Yes. So um, David asked me to say a few words, and I want. Do you guys want to hear the the story? It's a pretty good story. I'll keep it as short as I can. Um, well, fast forward. Let's go back to about June. I looked at it last night. So it's June 27th. Uh, this year and uh, David invited my wife and myself over to dinner we went over and had a great dinner and with just Dave and uh, and myself and my wife but when we left my heart was aching because Dave was hurting as no one you know of course he's hurting but it, it, to me it seemed like I was helpless to help him and then I had one of those Mike Agostini ideas, which normally are really stupid. And my wife's like, no, that's a dumb idea. You need to stay in your lane, brother. It's not. And I go, no, I, something, something. I got to do something. So but it, it, it wasn't, it just seemed, it was early still, and it's still early. But whatever, it was even earlier. And I like, I, so I sat on it until October 31st. And I had a dream the night before. I told Dave about this, and I said, uh, I, was, uh, I was your best man at your wedding. So that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I skipped ahead a little bit there. But anyway, um, so I go, I'm, I'm going to make it happen. So I was in the Home Depot parking lot. This is November, no, October 31st. And I text, I go, who do I talk to first? It's a chicken and egg thing, right? I mean, do you talk to Glennis first? And she says, no, that's a dumb idea. I haven't dated in eight years. I'm still in love with my husband, of course. And Dave, of course, is still in love with Terry. And so, I mean, where do you start? So I, I, I pretty much just said, Glennis is going to get that message. And so I sent her a message on Facebook. She didn't respond right away, but then she did. And she said she'd call me tomorrow. That's November 1st. She calls me. And what's this is about? And I, I'm trying to tell her, uh, here's Dave. He just, my motivation was not this. This is awesome. But that's not what I thought. I wanted somebody to talk to Dave. My friend was hurting. <laughs> and I just wanted him to talk to somebody. And I said, the similarities between you two is off the chart. Boom, 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 boom. You guys have a lot of things in, you know, match.com can't come close to how match you well are. So I, and I, and she's like, I don't know. And so some of you know I'm an actor, and I turned on the fake crying, and I started, <laughs> yeah, I started bawling. I gotta help my friend. And she goes, okay. <laughs> just for coffee. I said, just for coffee. You know, I go, or you might get married. I don't know, but somewhere in between, <laughs> something's gonna happen. But it's, it's, I think it's supposed to be. So anyway, so then I call Dave in the same parking lot, out of the blue, and I say, Dave, um, I think I found a woman for you to talk to at least. And to, would you, would you be interested in at least having coffee with her? And he's like, thought about it for a second. He goes, Yeah, I think that would help me. And so. They planned a coffee date. He called and said, hey, we have a coffee date like six days later. So six days later, I want to be in the loop, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, I worked hard for over an hour on this relationship. I, so I, I, I called Dave. I said, let's have lunch. And let's say it's a six of whatever. And so, I, and so I met him for lunch. I said, hey, are you nervous? He goes, yeah, I'm a little nervous. This is kind of different. I don't know what's going to happen. And he goes, well, don't think. It's not romantic. It's just the talk. And, and so um, that was at... 12, I left him, and the meeting was like at 2, and then I'm waiting for the text. Now, if anybody knows anything about Dave, he texts and responds to texts about as fast as molasses in January in Vermont. <laughs> He's not the quickest texter backer, at least not to me. Maybe it's just to me. Maybe it's really good to you guys. Anyway, I said, Dave, you're killing me, and he responds, it was lovely. It was lovely. And then, um, and then the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> so whether it's divine intervention or the cosmic forces, if anybody and everybody wants to work through me, I can't take responsibility other than I knew by talking to Glennis at the high school reunion many months earlier, a year, over a year earlier, that she was all the things that might be able to help my good friend. Dave Durham, and I love you. All right. So I want to end with one thing. Um, this is a song. <clears throat> Dave. Oh, no, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> that would be horrible. All right. So in 1964, a man named Sheldon Harnick, he's a lyricist, and he wrote a song, the lyrics to a song. And I'd like to read the first three stanzas because I think they apply both to you and to Miss Glennis. <clears throat> See if I can get through this. Matchmaker, matchmaker. Make me a match. Find me a find. Catch me a catch. Matchmaker, matchmaker, look through your book and find me the perfect match. I'm not gonna sing the whole thing. Okay. Matchmaker, matchmaker, I'll bring the veil. You bring the groom, slender and pale. That's you, Dave. <laughs> bring me a ring, and I'm longing to be the envy of all I see. For Papa, make him a scholar. For Mama, make him rich as a king. For me, well, I wouldn't holler if he were as handsome as anything. And you're very handsome, Dave. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. 
Find me a find, catch me a catch. Night after night in the dark all alone. So find me a match of my own. Sheldon Harnick. You guys, another toast to these guys. I'll, I'll pretend I have one. To a long and happy life, to Dave's family, to Glenn's family, to the ministers. This was one of the most awesome weddings I've ever been to. Thank you so much. Given the emotions by <clears throat> given the emotions by the old brother, cards are a good idea. Hello. Okay. Today we are experiencing the presence of Jesus in this room. Yeah, hold the Jesus, the healer of broken hearts, is with us, mending broken hearts. We're witnessing the miracle of God's grace, God's love, and God's compassion. I'd like to read some very heavily paraphrased words of Pope Francis. Remember that to be happy is not to have a sky without a storm, work without fatigue, or relationships without disappointment. To be happy is to find strength and forgiveness, hope in battles, and love in discord. It's not only to enjoy a smile, but to also reflect on the sadness. It's to thank God for everything morning in the morning, every morning, in the miracle of this life that we share. It's to kiss your children, pamper your parents, and love poetic moments with friends. To have the maturity to say, I made a mistake, and the ability to say, I love you. May your life become a garden of opportunities for happiness. And in spring, may it be a lover of joy. Dave and Glennis, as you begin this new life together, may you walk in an unconditional love. Jesus is at the center, a new love rooted in God's love. Please know that we deeply, deeply care for you support you and will always share in your tears, joy, and happiness. Dave and Glennis, we love you. Cheers to Dave and Glennis in our future. <laughs> <laughs>